everybody. It's Monday. It's um, six o'clock, which means it's the Monday snack. It's unbelievable how nerve wracking this is trying to deal with all the tech. But um, hopefully um, everybody is well. And um, this week I have a bumper, bumper show um, with my good mate, Steve Turner. Um, fabulous keyboard player. So um, it was quite tricky putting this show together because we, we were talking for what seemed like hours. And so editing it down into a nice bite-sized chunk was a bit of a challenge, but hopefully you're really going to enjoy this. Um, before we kick off with the actual interview, um, I got told off last week because people were checking out the tracks um, and no one, um, people telling me that I didn't sort of say where the music came from. So shameless plug. All the music you heard last week came from my first album, What Happens Now, available on all platforms, um, Amazon, all the digital streaming platforms. And um, yeah, so if you're interested, grab a copy. Hopefully you'll love it. We'll be hearing more music from that during the course of this evening. So I am going to dive on in um, with the first part of the interview with Steve. Um, and in this bit, we were talking um, a bit about his history and um, how he copes with my random writing process. Check this out. So this week, I have the amazing Mr. Steve Turner, longtime friend. Keyboard player extraordinaire. Um, and um, we have known each other for ages. Ages, and you, you know, as we were just talking a little while ago, you said 1997. Yeah. Um, going back to the point, not quite that far back in history when we both had hair. But, um, <laughs> but <laughs> well, going I, back. I was probably similarly, I think I was, you know, I was a hair suit, not a hair suit, actually. No, yeah. I think I was. I think pretty much I'd st I was shaving the bumps by that point. At that point. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I definitely remember we were both slap heads at the moment of meeting, right? So um, yeah, we go back a long, long way. And the first, the first point we met was with Louise Redknapp. Um, that was a lovely tour. That was actually really, really good fun. A lot of fun. Um, really, really good fun. Yeah. Old, old school, two keyboard players, percussionists, TV <laughs> section, old school. <laughs> yeah oh boy that's great so um so that's when we met and mm. you made a massive impression for right right from the off right right from the off mm. and then we went on to work together doing um kelly la rock which was an amazing experience great vocalist great music and um culminated um in me bringing you in to do the kylie the kylie gig you have always been to me the hardest working man in show business, right? But in terms of you working with me on my material, some of it's tricky. Mm. I guess a lot of it is um, subliminally tricky. Some of it's tricky, right? So I just want you to explain what you have done in terms of what's your what's been the process over time developing the ability to be able to walk into a situation like that mm. and completely crush it mm. <laughs> i just want to know how, how what have you what what did you put in place um in order to kind of be able to do that well i mean in a nutshell i was uh, i brought up in a in a classical music family now that really really helped so I was in, I was singing in choirs uh, b before I could read music, before I could, before I could read uh, books, effectively. I was kind of singing in choirs at five or six, you know, my dad's choirs. Um, we always, we had a piano at home. Dad's piano, dad's house was always, pianos always tuned, lids always up so that we were encouraged to always jump on and play. Uh, then I kind of went off the reading for a bit because I, I went into, into jazz, which, which really actually through my dad as well that really helped me develop uh my my uh extended harmony because i'd had the harmony training from the classical but extended harmony um and uh and then through that i started to do what a lot of people do is just just to to jump into any situation where there's a or organize a situation where we can just get together and rehearse something and we used to do something similar to what you're doing i know your yours isn't exactly uh, hard music for the sake of hard music it's it's tricky 
but it's it's tuneful and it's it's accessible but it, it just happens to be quite hard to play but um <laughs> What what we would do is we would we would book survival studios and acting would book it we for a fiver each or something we used to get the room for three hours for five weeks wasn't crazy like that and we would write ridiculous tunes in seven eight and you know uh, 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 yeah you know it was stupid time signatures or it would be seven eight three four 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 all within about eight bars um, just to test ourselves and that was because there was what else would you do on a on a Tuesday so we get together to do that. I, I loved big band as well. Again, through my through my dad's love of big band, I got into uh, I, uh, I I used to go and uh, join as many big bands as, as I as I could, would have me. It's difficult with the big band because there's one piano chair, there's <laughs> four four trumpet chairs, four trumpet chairs, you know, five saxes, but only one piano player. So you kind of have to wait for somebody to disappear off on tour or something. And you right. Get in. So I, that's what I did. Um, I joined uh, Winston Rollins' big band, uh, rehearsing down at um, Chiswick, and Pete Cater rehearsing at Bryceley. So skip forward to you, that's a, a lot of that was really what made me a bit less frightened of your material because I'd I've been under that kind of pressure, um, right? In the past, there's nothing. A lot of the pop stuff I do, it's a different type, type of pressure, isn't it? The pop, yeah. Often yeah. you're not reading. You're often actually you learn this stuff. And it's more about for me. It's more about the programming. It's more about the, you know, the um, the the, uh, the the pocket and the vibe and the groove. And and I know that's all part of yours as well. But there's a lot of yours is that is those tricky rhythms. I, again, watching Carl talk about that, 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 that you know, that, that, um, because it is it's so tricky. It's almost better to it's almost easier to hear it than it is to read it. You can kind of get, right. You get get the rhythm in your head, but but the reading it has to be a part. There's so much of it, you have to really have an eye on the chart as well with your stuff. How mm. do you get to the point where you know you can do that so quickly? Mm. How are you able to do that? Yeah, I think that comes that comes down to the to the the jazz years, I suppose, really, isn't it? Because you you've uh, you're you're always thinking on your feet. When you're playing jazz, unlike right. with classical, where it's structured, uh, often structured, um, and pop also structured, it, it's you know with the, the jazz is, is that freedom to 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 you're constantly interpreting, um, and uh, so I, I ju and I just used to sit at home for for hours just playing through standards and trying things in you know in uh in in a multitude of different keys you know if i could do it in one key i wanted to be able to do it in in all in right. all the keys. that's a that's a, one of those crucial things so if, you know you learn a lick you want to be able to do it in every key so that it falls under your fingers wherever you okay wherever right you i'm gonna i'm gonna play something i'm gonna play a clip right yeah and and i'm gonna talk about it right so here's a clip here we go <laughs> Right, so, yeah, well, that's so straight back to me. <laughs> so <laughs> this is that example, right? I played that yeah. example, yeah, because that's not necessarily that tune wasn't necessarily in the fiddly unison line mm. kind of sort of family of tunes that I write. Yeah, mm. that was in the pocket, coming mm. up with ideas. Now I can think of, you know. A multitude of tunes where they're just great little ah, oh, you know, you you just put a little thing in, and that thing will be. I end up writing a string line. It will become sort of an integral part of the string arrangement or the brass arrangement because of this little thing you've just thrown in. I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated by it because I'm thinking, is it, is there some sort of deliberate thing in your brain that says, I am I am developing the ability to do this so that when I'm faced with this. This or this or this or this or this or this will work on top of it. 
the the problem the problem with me is uh, in all honesty that i i don't quite know what i do it <laughs> and how it, it happens right now that's it's just not you know there, there are some, some people who who do study and do and are much better now i i fall i fall um foul of if i've got a very complicated and i it's just happened with you a very complicated and fast uh sequence and say oh drop us a solo over that i struggle with that i it's if if things are at a, 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 a tempo where I, where my thoughts processes can can kind of have their time I, i'm okay you straddle a gap mm. between all the folks i've known in my life from the church side of things mm. Because that's a whole, that's a very, very similar skill, but on a different, it's a different vibe, right? So I I know so many players out of the whole black church tradition that if they know what key it's in, they can throw, they can throw a million different ways of getting from A to B. You sort of do a similar thing, but it's almost like that you said in that classical tradition, you will throw in these beautiful little, harmonies these little sort of almost like counterpoints and weird Out, stuff going yeah, on counterpoint is, is is my thing and that that comes from a love of a, and again and the upbringing in classical now yeah when i was singing in choirs we were doing it was um it was uh um palestrina william bird thomas tallis these these kind of uh you know uh something think of my centuries 16th 17th century composers uh when harmony was was almost in in it being developed and you know i'm, I'm like like so many people players you know uh j.s bach is such a hero and uh, meeting the, the this amazing collection of uh of gospel players who who then took me to the next stage it's like yeah that's a great chord <laughs> it's about four notes short of of the chord i would have done and that's what i learned one fact and you you would come you sometimes come and push come come over to the piano and go what you want to do is uh, and you give it out and, just, uh, and I thought, I've never heard that chord in my life, but that that's that chord is now in my collection, along with the many others you show me. <laughs> Steve is so funny, but you, the thing is, you can see, right? He's really well read, really rounded. He's got sort of a real um, wide range of experience, expertise, the whole bit. Really, really talented guy. Um, and in the next the next bit of the chat, right? We were then talking about his approach to um, being bludgeoned um, by my sort of random way of working in the studio. But before we go to that, I'm just gonna say quick hi to some folks. Mr. Walcott, great to see you. Great to see you, man, brilliant. Um, Will and Jimmy and Maxine and Bob and Bosch. Um, Mr. Turtle, great to see you. Ray Pitson, lovely, love to see you as well. Really, really cool. So, um, Matt Weston, Jimmy Jam, brilliant. Thanks everybody for tuning in. So here's the next bit of the chat when we're talking about some studio stuff. Check this out. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna play a clip, right? So we we had the we had the pocket the pocket bass thing, and then this was a this was another yeah. Ch check this out. This this is another clip that um. It was very, very interesting. Very, very short one. Here we go.
Love that tune. Love that tune. Yeah. Right. So, so that. Yeah. I think that session. I can't remember. I don't think you were slated to do to to be put through the mill on that one. Um, because that was the I think that was the only tune across the two albums I've recorded so far where we didn't put the rhythm, put the bass down to put the, the stuff down together. Mm. The only tune where we didn't um do a little rhythm section guide because I can't remember what happened. But anyway, so so I think I Julian over earlier and then you came down later. Right. But you mm. only you only just saw that. I don't. I don't look super stressed in that in that clip. Coming up, <laughs> like we have done previously. What makes me laugh as well? You can see. You can see another of my big influences in there, or you can hear it. Uh, Oscar Peterson, who I right. I, who, I mean, my dad was an Oscar Peterson fan, and that was my he was my introduction introduction to, to jazz. But anyway, aside from the playing, it's the noises. <laughs> that's the, I'm, that's, that's, that's what I'm old man noises. It's like you have to. It's like a, it's like a counterbalance to 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 this counterweight for the things you play. But, um, yeah, and obviously a bit of Michel Camillo in there as well. And, you know, that, oh man, because that you know, another big influence and that thing about just sitting so far back that you 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 almost falling back on the uh, uh, on the uh, to, to the beat behind because it's yeah. so. But um, but that oh, that was such a fun tune. The reason that you're first caught, and the reason why I love getting you right in on the ground floor when I um have written something, mm. is you can decipher. We've known each other so long, you can decipher the madness in my brain. I mm. remember years of me just going to you, Bruce Hornsby, bit of Bruce, <laughs> a yeah. bit of Bruce Hornsby, yeah. and you know yeah. exactly what I mean when it comes to that sort of stylistic piano thing. You know, yeah. oh, he, he wants a bit of that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. you know, Steve, a bit of a bit of that. And he, oh, I know what he means. You know, straight away you can immediately um, decipher my sort of these random directions that I give you, and yeah. and then your ability to just throw these really tasty inflections in. There's a there is a lot of that. I mean, we, we've you know how how many how many hundreds and hundreds wow. of hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, you know, again, we 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 go back to a day when you'd, it'd be nothing to have a month. Six weeks, eight weeks rehearsal. Exactly. Yeah, eight, yeah. eight weeks with, with Kylie. You know, back yeah. in the day. Um, so we had the luxury of that time of being able to really get in and develop. And again, you come over and you go, you go, hang on, yeah. <laughs> 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 nothing, nothing better than a drummer coming and showing you how to play. <laughs> but, but and also, I, but I do remember also you were very, very, very hot on rhythm. Very hot on rhythm. You had built these these lovely. You know, fluid kind of um, uh, um, you know groove things, that, but they they still had to be locked to a click, and it's so unnatural for a musician. Right. So we yeah. have those things you'd record, and it would be, you know, that second semiquaver in the thirty fourth <laughs> bar of it, just a nads and nads <laughs> out. And sometimes I would say, no, it's not. <laughs> I, was, I don't think I ever said that. I'd be like, oh, you know, and I'd go away and listen, and then I'd be, oh, he's right, you know, it's, it's it's a small thing, but it, it what it did was that helped me to to hone the the more actually the playing to click thing. But yeah, outside of that gig, we did we did a lot that was that was was all about this uh, sitting as a as a as a pocket. I've got a, um, you know, uh, a, a very quick story um, was with. Um, uh, one producer I worked with who we, we got together in a room, uh, got, he wanted to put the whole rhythm section down in, in, uh, in one. And uh, we thought that's great, lovely. So we got in the studio um, and uh, we, uh, uh, and, and he, he, he said, well, all good, all good to go. Okay. And, uh, and we'd already rehearsed his tune. He then presses, uh, presses play and we get a click for the first time. So we'd just been running through the tune and a click. Ooh, and, evil. Uh, yeah Evil. and uh, and uh we so we said well okay well so yeah, okay we, we carried on with the click and then uh, we did the take and then he, he said okay do you want to come and have a listen so we went back into the control room and he said you're pulling ahead you're behind you're not in the pocket you're you're not listening to the click yeah uh, and we carried on all morning like that going back in putting another pass down don't 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 on this very groovy tune very very groovy tune um 
till lunchtime and we were all ready to punch this guy out. We, um, we I won't say who it is, actually, but anyway, but if I quite a well-known producer. And we, so we went and played, uh, he said, right, lunch. We went and went into the, the dining area, went to lunch, and we played a bit of Frisbee in the garden um, just to get us back on, on, on you know, to uh, out of our, our little stupor. And then we got back in, and the first thing he did, the genius stroke was that we came back in and he said, right, here we go, first take of the afternoon, and there was no click. And because the, that, point of reference was removed we then we but so used to being berated for not listening to you're not listening to the bass player you're not listening to the drum that we we all started listening to we were hunting for the kick that wasn't there so i started to listen to the hats and the guitar and the right. you know and the kit and start hunt for, for clues and references and so we all just went locked together it was a, an absolutely amazing trick but then you were kind of similarly looking for that 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 unity with some of our, art, our, our the, the more fluid of the artists we work with, where where you uh, you you there's there's a there's a tiny bit of movement, but you're all kind of like locked in this nice little. It was very 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 cool. But um, let me play this clip because I want the folks to hear that bed mm. of solo piano you put down. What it ended up being this. Here's a little bit of a live version. So mm. yeah, you 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 kicked me to the curb, <laughs> and thankfully. You know, it, it's nice when you know so many musicians that are, that are cool that can handle this stuff. But mm. this is what it kind of ended up being. So you can see the value of the man that is Steve Turner. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, that tune in particular, um, everybody that recorded stuff on that tune um, seemed to come away wounded and bruised by the experience for some reason. But there you go. Um, hi to Rich Cass. Great to see you as well. Um, right. So we had a bit of fun. And I threw a little silly pop quiz Steve's way. Check this out. This is impossible quiz time. Yeah? We don't think. We don't think too long. Right. Uh, off, off the bat responses, okay? <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> right, here we go. Here we go. Keyboard players, right? Herbie Hancock or Chick Corea? Herbie Hancock. Cool. Arrangers. Quincy Jones or Vince Mendoza? Quincy. Cool, oh, okay. Oh, oh, no. Oh, uh, too late. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> right. Um, keyboard players again. Jason Ribello, Corey Henry. Uh, I'm thinking again, aren't I? Um, I have to rush you. I have to rush you. Uh, um, uh, I'm I have to rush you. Oh, Corey. 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 Okay. Taking far too long. You got. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. You've got to stay with the spirit. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, You're making keyboard. it tricky. <laughs> exactly. Deliberately so. Yeah. Um, keyboards. Roland D50 or Yamaha DX7? Oh, Roland D50. Ah. <laughs> Very assertive there. Um, yeah. Last one. Um, vintage Simps, right? Mini Moog or Profit? Moog. Oh, cool. We got there in the end. Got there in the end. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, you were taking far too long, man. Taking far too yeah. long. Yeah. Right. There's, a, okay. there's, argument, there's always arguments for both. With, with the Simpsons and that's, and that, that's, like, that's But I know. <laughs> that's why you need it. You need it straight off the bat. That, yeah. That's yeah. the whole point. That's the whole yeah. point. <laughs> Very funny. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Okay. Um, this next um, section of the chat. So that last tune you played, right? You can see it's kind of tricky, lots going on. It's a real brain teaser. 
Steve has an amazing knack of just playing the tastiest, most amazing, perfect passage of whatever for the moment. He's got a knack of doing that, right? And um, during this section, we kind of spoke about, about that. Here we go. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, that, that, that makes a ridiculously cool baseline. Ridiculous. So it. you, so I can hear, oh, every time that comes in, it's like, oh man, in octaves, you just throw that thing in. Very, very, really, really cool. Mm. That is the kind of stuff. That's the you, 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 you're chugging away, chugging away, and then you'll just throw this these little tiny, beautiful little little melodies in really really happening really really happening um another, a new question right so mm. young keyboard players right I, i've i've been approached by so a number of young keyboard players um doing um tutorials and some mentoring things via the teaching and stuff in colleges and bits mm. and they all seem excited about the fact i know you right <laughs> i've had people i've had kids kids booking a tutorial with me they walk in so um yeah so what, what do you want to talk about you know steve turner right <laughs> oh what's he like what's he do how do how does he do this and what i get all of that right so you, you sort of alluded to it already right but i'd say what are the things that um the reasons you think you've become so highly respected you've got to blow your own trumpet a bit here you've kind of skirted over some bits but you know, you're sort of the go-to guy in many ways. I'm seen as a reliable pair of hands on a gig. So, and that, so there are people, there are people that are better. I mean, on your album, for example, if you want a blistering synth solo, it's Neil and Gilly. If you want a raging Hammond, it's, it's Luke. You know, you've got these pe people have, that are, that, uh, that I, I'm, I suppose, you know, it's a, I'm a bit of a, Bit of a jack of all trades, and I can I can put it I can put it all together, um, and uh, and I do you know I do have the sounds and the and the you know the harmonic knowledge I don't know but I it's difficult to say it's a safe pair of hands I am you know I think I've a bit of a sometimes I've felt like I've been a bit of a blagger on on certain things. Oh, I don't I, you know what's funny what's what's funny about your answer there right. And I'm glad mm. I asked that question, and I'm glad mm. I got that answer, because we spoke. I've said to you before, you do, you don't really, you don't realize what you do. You can say you're a safe pair of hands, you're reliable. Um, to be reliable is one thing; to be reliably brilliant is another thing. Let me play. Let me play another ultra, ultra. This is oh, this is this is Steve Turner, right? on tasty steroids for me this is what it's about this is where it's at check this out oh man
Now that that is proper, proper, proper. <laughs> nice little leg. Yeah. Oh and man. Are, I mean, the thing is that there are there's stuff that. So what one one important thing for everybody to do, I think, every every player uh, any level is to is to frequently record what you're doing and listen back because you can sometimes it well that's that's how you you know how your pocket is sometimes you can't feel how your pocket is to listen yeah. back so, you know that yeah. um yeah. but also uh and right you're mentioning about little bits uh, little, Ooh, little wow. things. um but uh, on on the previous track with the with the with the whirly thing yeah the rose, whirly, I can't remember which yeah, 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 it's, whirly, yeah. It, it's um it's that you've got to be careful with those situations that you don't overplay. So uh, you got to find, you've got to know, you've got to hear the holes, find the holes, use use the use those little moments, but be ready to quickly retreat underneath <laughs> what's going on. What a real turning point for me was we were doing a doing a big band recording, and uh, trumpet player was leading it. Uh, we uh, when we took a break, he said he just said to me. Come, come and have a listen to the to the playback. Oh yeah, okay. I felt honoured, you know, but it, it wasn't it wasn't any great honour. He, he pulled me into the, into, the, into the control room. And he said, he said, "What what are you doing? What, I, mean, I mean, I mean, what are you doing? Because I was all over every, all that you could hear. I could only hear it when I stopped playing myself and listened back to it. That all these great, you know, big yeah. bands all, but you know, quite kind of like very tightly." Tightly written and 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 and, uh, and everything's interlinked, and so you got some keyboard player going blah, 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 all over it. It was it was uh, you know musical diarrhea, and he just he just said he was quite blunt. He said, "What are you doing?" He said, "Don't." <laughs> he said, "Use these, use these." And if, you know, <laughs> so, this is the way you said. That's really funny. That's so funny, but. I think we all have those. We all have those moments. I had this thing where um, I'd be, I used to do the thing where um, the latest thing I've been practicing made its way onto every gig I was on. Yeah. Right? You play it. You play it a thousand times <laughs> to you up with it, and then if you're clever, you put it. Then you put it in the in the back catalogue. That's the thing because we all need it. It's like the thing about so, saying you find something nice, you want to be able to play it in all in all the keys, in all the in all the modes, like major, minor, whatever. In all the, 20, 20 times 24 or whatever it might be um, and then do that and then if you if you've got any sense you don't do that on the gig you do it at the privacy of your own in the studio mm. here's, here's another one as well here's another one here's the last clip i'm going to play right here this is super steve this was super super tasty Turner, tasty. Oh my days! Amazing, amazing. Um, John Fisher, the Don. Great to see you, man. Great to see you. Um, right. What we're we doing now? What we're we doing now? Here we go. Time for some more foolishness. 
this is a little pop quiz um dealing with aspects of touring life life on the road here we go this is your tour life pop quiz i don't want any hesitation this time right right okay okay bang in straight in straight in yeah, okay yeah, yeah right here we go here we go right um it's a day off is it sightseeing or the hotel spa sightseeing ah cool right um tour bus yeah overnight drive 13 hour drive middle of the yeah. night oh. you need you need the loo this yeah. is the choice do you yeah. go barefoot or socks uh socks Cool. All right. Good, 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 good. Yeah. I was going to do a thing where it's like, you've only got one sock. Which foot do you choose? (laughs) 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 Okay. (laughs) Next one. (laughs) Next one. You get to your hotel room. Yeah. What do you want to see as your free biscuit on the mini bar? Is it going to be bourbons or the all butter shortbread? Bourbons. Bourbons. You didn't even have to go any further. Bourbons. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't need a second choice. Cool. Right. Catering backstage. What's your first stop? Is it the soup or the Danish? Soup. Love a love catering soup. Love. Uh, okay. love. Beautiful, beautiful. Last one. Last one. Um, yeah. How do you like your day sheet? Paper under the door or WhatsApp? Paper. Oh, old school. Old old school. Beautiful, yeah. <laughs> beautiful. That's good. A bit more. A bit more um, assertive there. A bit more assertive there. <laughs> right, for those of you right who've never been on a tour bus, right? Um it's a thing. You know, us guys sometimes hygiene hygiene isn't our strongest point, you know what I'm saying? So in a moving vehicle, when you hit the loo, not everyone is accurate with their aim, you know what I'm saying? So in the middle of the night, when you really need the loo on a tour bus. The toilet floor is fraught with danger. It's fraught with danger. So I really should have done the one with one sock. That would be, that would actually been you know that that would be funnier. Cool, right? Um. So um, who else we got? We got Bosch, we got thing. This is, oh, this is cool. This is cool. Um. So um. Final part of the chat. This is where it gets warm and fuzzy. This is where Steve just expands on the meaning of life, all consciousness. <laughs> You'll see what I'm saying. This this guy, he, he like I said, he, he, we had a conversation and it had a major effect on me. Um, all will become clear. Here we go. So here, right, I'm going to get, I'm going to get my, my, my Dr. Phil and my Oprah on, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Now, hopefully... I'm not going to overreach, right? But you probably don't, you probably, I don't know if I've told you this before, but um, there was a time, right, that we had a conversation and it had a profound, a profound effect on me, right? In a real positive way. So there's a while back, I'd called you to do a tour, year long tour. It it was going to be like wicked, massive tour, all over the place, have a laugh, decent money, you like you said no got to be around got to be around for the family mm. and at, up until that point right up to that point i um i i wasn't i wasn't a, i wasn't a parent then mm. i couldn't i couldn't get my head around it mm. I was, i'm like what are you talking about this, this this is what we do <laughs> like this is what we do we go on the road we have fun we play great music this is what we do i was i had this real this real tunnel vision about just improving myself, about getting better, about developing my career. When you said that to me, right, I didn't understand it until I became a parent. Mm. And then I totally, totally got it. I totally, totally got it. But I want you to give me your perception about what I just said. Yeah, well, I mean, as as a musician, we t- we are we we tend to be totally single mindedly focused and, and and self obsessed really about ourselves and our and our music and what it means. To, and so, uh, sadly, sometimes the partners, uh, uh, you know, can sometimes take second place when there's an important gig to or an, or something to you know when it's uh, when it's uh, you know seven thirty in the evening, it's time to 
leave your studio and go downstairs and sit on the couch. Uh, and you were like, no, I have to get this mix done. I have to, yeah. Sorry. You know, and it, it, it's it's not a good it's not a good thing. It's not a good place to be, but it's what we tend to do. Um, and then with the children thing, that's an interesting one because there's uh, that th there's there's not really any there's no re you can't really point any any good reason to have kids for. I'm going to have a kid because I'm going to have a child. <laughs> It's gonna. It's no. It's gonna be. It's gonna be sleepless nights. It's gonna be expensive. It's gonna be worry. It's gonna be. It's all. Is you know. But but we we are you know pre predisposed to yeah. to, to procreate. And, and then and you're still thinking this is why am I doing this? This is I can't see any point in this. We were happy as we were, weren't we? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's a man's perspective. Because, <laughs> Because <laughs> for a woman, it's a biological thing. <laughs> so, oh, so I. But then, when when you're there at the birth, and that's one oh. of the reasons I've missed tours because I wanted to be there for the right. birth. I turned down a few, a few, you know, big chunky tours because I didn't want to miss the birth of the two my two children, and and then unfortunately extends them because you don't want to also miss the next nine months or, or however long the tour might be, let's say six months you don't want to miss that either so you end up taking chunks of time off and and but once you've had your first child and you 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 have that you you discover that person that parental bond um and and it all it all makes sense and all the anguish and the worry and the you know whatever and, and financial hardship makes makes sense so it's a real it's a real difficult one with with tour versus child um you'd never get those years back that's the other thing isn't it if, mm. if, you, if you i missed a, a chunk of my my son's life uh Same here, yeah. it was the it was the, my busiest touring time and i i took most of it really to be fair um my, my, i was a bit different with my daughter i tried to be a bit more picky that's when i started to turn stuff stuff down uh but but you start to think when the tour when that tour comes in and you do the calculations and you work out how much money you're turning down. You don't only think of the, the week's wages. You're thinking of the three, four weeks rehearsal or whatever. Then, you know, a month, six weeks, two months tour, even six months. Once I was doing what turned down. Exactly, yeah. um, well, but, you like uh, I'm saying, I, you, turn, you turn down the best part of a year, right? Yeah, yeah. And Prof, Steve, I'm telling you something, right? Looking back, I, I sort of feel... I feel it feels weird to me that I didn't get it. But why would I get it? I wasn't a parent. Yeah, until you had that. And that feel like exactly. And, and, I, and I was still, and I was still very driven, still very, I've got, you know, sometimes, in, sometimes that, that drive is born of insecurity because you're thinking, am I good enough? Am I still good enough? Can, can I still um, sort of, um, can I sort of operate in, in these environments, in those circles? Can I, am I up to that level where I can do the next thing? But that conversation was the most profound conversation because it, I've got the utmost respect for you anyway, right? But just that, you don't, you don't even know what you did by, by saying that to me. Mr. Turner, this has been the most incredible conversation. You were worried about this, right? You were worried about yeah. this. Yeah. And look, we've been talking for like, hours it feels like yeah. Yeah? yeah um really really cool thanks so much thanks so much um there will be obviously as always there'll be more mad mind-bending visits hopefully once COVID-19 um is kicked to the curb hopefully um we'll be doing some more work but thanks again absolutely amazing pleasure pleasure Andrew nice one <laughs> top man top man my favorite line <laughs> In that in that whole section was we're happy now aren't we <laughs> that's brilliant absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant um kids are amazing kids are amazing it's it's funny like last week right i'm driving i'm driving the smallest small to school no well back from school i'm driving the smallest small back from school and just you know just throw away comment she sat there the smallest smallest sat there she's like daddy Oh, um, did really well in maths today. Yeah, teacher was really happy with me today, Daddy. Um, because I, I, why was she happy with you? Oh, because you know, um, I, I did really well with with a certain test we did, and 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 she looked up and she smiled, 
because normally she's got a glum resting face, just like you, Daddy. Charming, charming. There you go, kids, kids, eh? Um, massive, massive thanks to Steve. Steve is a don of dons, friend for life, top man, top man. Um, again, quick reminder before I go, I want to thank everybody. Mick Crook, great to see you. Um, who else? And James. And who else is there? All my iPads frozen. Ian. And obviously Antlaw, Top Man. Uh, everybody, everyone's, everyone that's tuned in, thank you very much. Just a quick reminder, all the music you heard today, apart from that little Latin tune, um, is on this tune, is on this album here. What happens now? Available from all the usual places where you purchase your music. Um, so dive in. Um, and you can visit my website, it's andrewsmall.net. My social media handle is Andrew Small Drums across all of them. So that's here on Facebook, that's on Instagram, and it's also on YouTube where you can catch this whole program all over again. Um, really, really great to have everyone tune in. And I look forward to seeing you all again next week. There'll be someone else here. Um, yeah, hopefully there'll be someone else here. I haven't called them yet. I'm sure they're going to say yes, okay? Great to see you. Take care. Have a fantastic week. See you. Bye-bye.